Welcome to Franny's Farm, where the Utopian Sea Project has all of their wonderful trials. I'm not going to show you everything today, but we have a lot of stuff in the ground, including 50 different varieties of okra. And today I just want to give you a quick intro into the wonderful okra flower. We're going to dig deep to see what it's all about, how you can stop it cross-pollinating, you can eat it, all sorts of wonderful things. So let me show you what we're talking about. Right here you have pretty much the perfect okra flower. The okra flower, once pollinated, creates an okra pod. But because it's so beautiful, lots of insects will share that pollen. And so what we have to do is put a bag over the unopened flower so that it doesn't cross-pollinate. And on this very same thing right here, some people mistake this as an okra pod, but it's actually an unopened flower. So you can see it's not quite there yet. So we're gonna, we're gonna dig into this a little bit and I'll show you what's going on underneath the flower. Here's a pretty awesome example of a very clear okra pod and then a very clear uh, okra flower bud. So for seed saving, all we need to do is put a bag over the unopened bud. Very, very easy. Just give me one second. I just cinched that shut because what we're aiming to do is stop any insects getting into it. And so the flower is going to open inside that bag. It's a perfect flower, both male and female sexual organs on the flower, so it can self-pollinate. Just natural wind and, and rustling around will be enough for it to self-pollinate. So I'll come back through this field in a few days take off that bag by which time the flower would have opened, self-pollinated, and the little okra pod will be forming. And in fact, I feel a bit like Blue Peter for any British lookers. Over here we have one I made earlier. So I bagged this flower just a few days ago, and again, if you forgive a little bit of camera shake, what we'll do... It's definitely a two-handed job. So I pulled that flower off, that bag off, and what you see is the baby little okra pod already forming. And then inside this bag, I'll dig it out for you. Inside this bag, we have the flower that has done its job. We can throw that away. And then this bag is good to be reused for another bagging project. Important thing is we won't know the difference between this pod and this pod. Once it's grown up, you just won't be able to tell the difference. But right now we know that this one has been potentially cross-pollinated by all the other okras in the field, and this one hasn't. So what we need to do is grab... What we need to do is grab something to mark them, and we just tie it around here. Again, a much easier two-handed job, but you get the idea. Now you know that that's my seed saving pod. Nobody else is to come into the field and, and eat it or harvest it. And if you look down the row, you can see lots of orange tags from ones I've already done. So that's the simple act of seed saving. When you have a perfect flower, it's, a, it's just a simple case of covering that flower as a physical barrier to stop any uh, insects affecting that cross-pollination. Now, Let's find a big beautiful flower because I want to I want to show you something else. Okay, so I've opened this flower up a little bit, but basically what you're seeing is that red bit on the end is the stigma, so that's the female pollen receiving end of the uh the pistil. Uh, it's attached to the style which you can't see right now and then the style goes to the ovary which it is the okra pod to be. But then on the side, we have the stamial columns. So what hopefully you can see are those uh, white strips with lots of little yellow pockets on them. And so that's the male part of the, the plant, the stamen, and the anthers are what produce the pollen, which pollinates the stigma. So all those little yellow bits on the end of 
the okra flower are actually like pollination happening. That's the, the pollen has got onto the stigma. And so we're likely to have this fruit that is farmed. Uh, so that's, that's really good news. Interestingly, once we get into the flower, I'm going to see if I can do this one handed. The flower petals, you can pull off. See there? That's the stamial column and underneath, hopefully I can do that gently. One, two, apologize for the shakiness. What we're beginning to see now is the ovary ex is exposed and so is the style. So I'm removing the petals and the male part of the flower. So this is a process called emasculation where we're just gonna leave the female part of the flower. Let me switch hands. If I can pull this off without breaking anything. Okay, so I got two, two at the same time. So now what you're seeing is just the stamen, sorry, the stigma, attach the style, attach the ovary. We know pollination has already happened. So at this point, we're still gonna get an okra part even though I've pulled off all the petals and the male parts. Um, but it's pretty cool to see it like that. If you were interested in seed breeding, what you would do is you would emasculate the flower, you would remove all the male parts before it's had a chance to shed pollen on the stigma. So we're talking about before the flower is open, like the day before the flower is opened, you would come here and unwrap that flower bud, remove all the petals and the stamial columns so that there was no male pollen to self-pollinate the plant. And then you'd put a bag over it to isolate the stigma and you would choose whatever male pollen you wanted to come to make your intentional cross. So that's how we would, if we were seed breeding and making a cross to produce a new variety, that's the process that would happen. So that's emasculation. It's just pretty cool to see it all. And then the fun thing with emasculating flowers is we're left with all the petals, which are delicious. Mm -hmm.